In this episode of Bear TV News, we talk to a director about a recent film screening on campus, follow up with Tommy Chamberlain on an important discovery, visit the National Underground Railroad Museum, try some Zen Walk in the calf, check up on some of the latest U Pike Bear sporting events, and much more. Hello, U Pike viewers, and welcome to the April 2022 edition of Bear TV News. I'm Blake Moffin. And I'm Seth Whip. We are covering all the recent news at U Pike and our community. Last month, we reported on a unique discovery that led U Pike's Tommy Chamberlain down a unique path of research. Today, reporter Andrew Stratton is back with an update. In our previous show, we talked with U Pike's Tommy Chamberlain about a piece of wood that could have possibly dated back to biblical times. Since then, the carbon dating results have come back, and I once again sat down with Mr. Chamberlain to discuss his findings. Uh, our wood uh, dated to right around the year 300 AD. Now, that's a little bit later than the biblical date, but we're still talking some really important time in ancient history. This is during the Roman Empire, uh, specifically around the time, let's say, of uh, a famous name like Constantine the Great. Although they have a confirmed date for the wood now, the work is far from over. Believe it or not, Mr. Chamberlain says, that was the easy part. The hard work now is we ask the question, where did that wood bean come from? And to me, this is like a historical detective story. Our, our primary working theory is this wood bean was possibly used in an early Christian structure in Jerusalem that would have been built sometime in the early 300s. So here's the, here's the historical detective part. Can we determine what buildings fit that information and uh, maybe give us an answer. The person that had the wood sample appreciated what the university did and the research, so that person has offered to give us the rest of the sample. And it will appear in the future uh, when we continue to do archeology span projects at the University of Pikeville and displays for our students in the community. Uh, we will actually have a nicer piece of the wood sample now and better tell the story of uh, this sample off a of wood beam from uh, Jerusalem is little that UPAC students got to study, carbon date, and investigate, and we'll talk about the ancient history and the time frame that it comes from. You know, the great thing about archaeology is that there's always something new to discover, and we wish Mr. Chamberlain the best of luck on his future endeavors. I'm Andrew Stratton with Bear TV News. Are you looking to not only get some academic assistance, but also prepare yourself for a future career? Well, look no further than UPAC's ACE program. Reporter Austin Williams has the inside scoop on what they can do to help you out. UPike's ACE program, also known as the Academic and Cultural Enrichment Program, can help you by providing comprehensive student support from orientation to graduation. A federally funded TRIO program, ACE's goal is to improve student academic performance and increase retention and graduation rates. I've been with ACE for 16 years and I worked for a year and a half as a mentor before that as a student. I had the inspiration from, I was in the patent leadership program as a staff member and got to experience that. It was through the Chamber of Commerce and we would go out to different um, local businesses and, and different places in the region and hear from different leaders. So I thought that was something that we could really utilize with our college students and especially get them um, job ready. ACE participants can also apply for the LEADS program, meaning Leadership, Engagement, Achievement, Development, and Service. I've been um, with the ACE program for 20 years. Last year, um, Sheena decided that we would make it a two-year program and that we would have um, two groups concurrently um, going through the LEADS um, program. So with that, we that has opened up a whole new set of opportunities for our students to not only do job um, interviewing skills, resume writing, but also we're looking at mental health, self-care. So we're able to expand um, just a holistic approach to, to the person so that they are very well um, prepared emotionally and academically and professionally to go out into the workforce. And I'm Austin Williams with Bear TV News. Signing off. UPike recently had a Peabody winning editor of 40 plus feature films to come to our campus to showcase his latest work. I was at the event to talk to him about his film. The University of Pikeville oh, recently held a screening for South Arts film Los Hermanos or The Brothers on March 30th. 
Director Ken Schneider was there to introduce his work. So Los Hermanos, the Brothers, is a story of two Cuban virtuoso musician brothers, who one who lives there in Havana, one who lives here in New York, who have been denied the privilege of being together, performing together, and creating together due to the U.S. embargo of Cuba. The South Arts program is a way for artists from the South to get their art out into the world through grants and programs. We've been selected by the Southern Circuit, which is part of the Southern uh, Arts Humanities uh, Council. And we're part of a slate of films that is touring the South, playing at universities and community centers. And today is our second screening of three in Kentucky at University of Pikeville. After the screening, Schneider took the stage to give a Q&A for the film or anything he's worked on in general. And we had a lot of film students in the audience today and had a really good discussion about filmmaking and, and the origin of projects and how we decide uh, what subjects deserve being a, a documentary film. It was a fun and insightful event that not only showed a good documentary, but allowed us to speak directly with one of the people behind it. This has been Seth Whiff from Bear TV News, signing off. Up next, we have a special report from Trey Barnett as he was able to go on a U-Pike field trip to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today we visit the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, where we will learn more about the history of slavery and obstacles they had to go through to overcome it. So, uh, the Underground Railroad Center trip was really important. It's a really informational thing. You should come and, you know, just learn about the importance and just really learn what they went through. And it's really emotional, honestly, as a student. This trip was very important and substantial to people that may not know about the history of slavery because it gives a better insight of how they feel in bondage and also how they struggle to fight through the pain. We got to observe and see paintings to give us an image of how it was and how they were. Also, there were voice recordings of slaves talking from their point of view and to put us in those shoes of how they seen things and to teach us the history of it and they also tell us stories. Even for people that may have already known about history of slavery, it was always more to learn and discover. So we went to the National Underground Railroad Museum so we can learn about our history, uh, particularly about the movement of abolition and freedom. Uh, so today, 18 students joined as we came to Cincinnati, and we had a great day of learning, and also Chinese food, so go buffet. It was a great trip and a true eye-opener because it allowed us to see how they fought to freedom and really suffered to make it, also to show us how grateful and lucky we are today in society. It's Trey Barnett with Bear TV News, and I'm signing out. Have you noticed anything different in the CAF lately? Aramark has been working hard to deliver more options to our student body. Reporter Nancy Brown has more. April 4th through April 8th was local restaurant week up at U-Pike. Up in the City View Cafe, students and staff got the chance to try food from a local restaurant partner. The food was really good. It's nice to have different options in our cafeteria. I really enjoyed it. Zen Walk served Cantonese and Szechuan favorites for lunch and dinner. Orange chicken and fried rice were the main highlights on the first day of this event. Um, I would like to try maybe Indian, some Korean food, some Thai food would be nice. Um, it's just nice to have some different options. I would love to see this. I think it would really um, give students a different experience and we can try things from different cultures and um, just try new things. Many people on campus were excited to try something new and diversify their food tastes. Um, it was pretty good. I think it just changes because I think we have like the same things sometimes when we eat here. So I think having different types of food every, every now and then is definitely a good change. Diversity is an important thing to explore in college and we're grateful that the local restaurant week gave students at U-Pike an opportunity to put themselves out there and try something new while supporting a local business. I'm Nancy Brown, Bear TV News. In effort to help students at UPike combat stress, we have opened the Thrive Counseling Center. Marty Green, the Thrive Director, and Glenna Henson, a Thrive Counselor, believe open walk-in times for students to talk to a therapist is a helpful tool for students to manage stress. To this end, Thrive hosts a weekly event and record memorial called Quick Talk. It's just a time where students can come in if they want to learn more about Thrive. It's a time where they can come in and vent about things that have happened during the day or something like that on their minds. 
we all need somebody to talk to and students need to know that we're here. Quick Talk is held weekly on Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. No appointment or registration is required. Just come, ask questions, talk, and be heard. Up next, we are continuing our student profile series where we highlight a variety of UPike's finest. First up, we have a report from Andrew Stratton on biology major Darby Chapman. Founded in 2018, the University of Pikeville's optometry program has attracted students from across the world and even in our own backyard. We had the opportunity to sit down with Miss Darby Chapman to hear what she had to say about her experiences with the program. So I have been wanting to be an optometrist for a little while now. I actually was born with really bad vision. So because of that, I um, want to do that with the rest of my life since I spend a lot of time in optometry clinics. I want to work somewhere for a few years to get a lot of training and get used to things. And then I want to be able to actually own my own practice one day in my hometown of Louisa, Kentucky and be able to start a free eye exam clinic for a lot of kids in the rural areas who just don't have the time or the money to get out to clinics near where we live. Darby had the opportunity to participate in an internship this past summer and she gained a lot more than just experience. I actually did an internship this summer with Dr. Elliot and Dr. Conley in the Cannonsburg Walmart. Uh, Dr. Conley and Dr. Elliot have both told me that if I can get through school in the next few years, they would love to hire me at the clinic and that if I need a clinic to work at, they would be more than happy to get one for me to work at so that I could work under them. You know, it's very rare to find a college student with their entire life planned out. However, you just met one. I'm Andrew Stratton with Bear TV News. For our second student profile of the evening, we got to spend some time with student athlete Maya Holmes as she balances school life with athletics. Maya Holmes is one of the many student athletes here at UPOC who is pursuing their dreams and getting an education. My major is healthcare management. Um, I have always been interested in healthcare and also the management side of it. So um, I've been this major for like two years now and I really enjoy it. Um, I'm also coming back for a fifth year next year so I can play soccer because that's also one of my passions and I've played here for four years. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be great. She is preparing for her upcoming fifth and final year here at UPOC. Maya is an extremely talented soccer player who received the first Mid-South Conference Player of the Week in years for the women's soccer team. So what I plan on doing in the future is maybe work um, in a hospital as a manager or work in a nursing home, but more on the management side of the business. Um, and maybe coach soccer on the side. I think I would rather coach high school or maybe even college teams. I would like to coach high school soccer because my coach in high school was very influential to me. Um, she helped me get here to college to play soccer and um, I think that coaching high school would be um, good because I could be able to influence um, my kids as players that can, could play in college. Maya has a bright future ahead of her, both in the career field and on the soccer field. This is Latasha Dalton reporting from Barry TV News. For our third and final profile this episode, we spoke to football player and education major Eli Stallard. In recent years, there are growing concerns there will be a shortage of teachers in the United States. UPike's Patton College of Education is working hard to train future teachers to address this shortage. I spoke at UPike education major Eli Stallard about what made him want to pursue a career in this field. I always wanted to be a teacher because uh, I had a lot of teachers throughout middle school and high school who really helped me out a lot and uh, it seemed like they really cared about their job. So that's something I always wanted to get into, and I also want to be able to coach football, too, to stay in the game. Eli considers teaching not to just be a job, but an opportunity to help others. I would like to impact the younger generation by just being an overall good teacher and helping them in any way I can. And I'd also like to help them find what they're passionate about and something they would love to do with their life, like I found. Eli explained to me to better help his career in education, he has been working as a substitute teacher in his hometown. And during that, I've gotten a lot of advice from some of my old teachers that I think is going to help me uh, become the teacher that I want to be one day. 
Until then, Eli is working to complete his degree at Ute Pike. I've learned a lot here and grown up a lot here too. Uh, I've also made a lot of good friends here that uh, I'm going to be friends with for a while. So I would say that overall I've had a pretty good experience. This is Michael Lee and you're watching Barry TV News. We want to give a big thanks to all the students that were willing to go on camera to provide us more insight into student life on campus. Up next, we have our U-Pike Sports segment featuring Jack Mefford. Hey everybody, I'm Jack Mefford, and I'm here to tell you all about the latest athletic news and events on campus. For our first story of the show, we have a piece on the U-Pike archery team. The University of Pikeville archery team has been gearing up for their third and final season of the 2022 year. They're preparing to go into their outdoor season right now. And we had a chance to sit down with head coach Ellie Yoakum to talk about what they are doing for physical and mental preparation for this upcoming season. There's lots of things that we need to prepare for tournaments. One thing that the athletes do is they go and work out on their own time and our assistant coach makes all the training plans for that. Um, also, at tournaments, we have team rounds for men's teams, women's teams, and mixed teams. And that's a very situational thing. So you could be shooting with three of the same people that we practice at a tournament, or it could be a completely different three, just depending on what happens at the tournament. We always are running through scenarios, so the athletes know what to do if any scenario were to come up. We also had a chance to sit down with Matthew Russell and Daniel Clayton. To be getting ready for outdoor season, I've been setting up my arrows, I've been shooting every day at practice and making sure that all my stuff is all set up for the upcoming tournaments. What I'm getting ready to do for outdoor season is I'm working on a new release. Uh, switch from my hinge release to my thumb button release. Help me improve my groups. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to Arizona Cup next week. Fly out to Arizona for a couple of days, we'll shoot a tournament. Um, it's only the second time I've shot this tournament, so I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully my release is going to help me there and get my scores up. My name is AJ Clements, and this is Bear TV News. Many of us see various U-Pike sports clips or graphics while on social media, but few of us probably know who the person responsible for them is. Luckily for you, we sat down with Alec Morgan, our sports information director here at U-Pike, to learn more about his job. Alec has been with U-Pike for a few years now and has shown immediate success. He streams, writes reports, and creates edits for all 25 varsity sports teams here at U-Pike. Our vision for sports information is to really be on par with some of the bigger programs you see. Um, attractive content is just one piece of that, and that's kind of where we've started to excel, but it's so much more. And it, it comes down to having reliable video, having you know well-written pieces, having accurate records and keeping those records, stuff like that, and really communicating with coaches, student-athletes. I think down the road, what we want to turn that into is an opportunity for students to get involved with us, to learn anything that we know, and for us to learn from them, to kind of understand the trends and things that they like to see so we can boost the brand as much as possible and grow U-Pike Athletics on a larger scale. If any student is interested in getting experience in any of these fields, please contact Alec at alecmorgan at upike.edu and follow U-Pike Athletics on all social media platforms for new daily content. Well. That's all for this episode of Sports Update. I'm Jack Mefford. Go Bears. Thanks, Jack. Before we wrap up the show, we are going to send things over to Austin Williams to update us on some upcoming events this April. Hello, everybody. I'm Austin Williams, and I'm here to tell you about the biggest upcoming campus events you need to know about. First up, BSU and Pride Plus are hosting a lip sync battle as part of the Spring Festival event. The competition will be held on Wednesday, April 27th, at 7.30 p.m. on the 7th floor of the HPE building. If you want to perform, you can find sign-up information on the Campus Group app. Next up, Hillbilly Days is coming to Pikeville Thursday, April 21st through Saturday, April 23rd. Pikeville is expecting a record number of attendees in town, so there will be extra security measures placed on campus. Remember to have a U-Pike ID with you at all times during this event. Finally, the Film and Media Arts program will be hosting its 8th annual Film and Media Arts Festival at the end of April. The three-day event will feature the screening of over 50 films from around the region and beyond. To learn more about the films and see an event schedule, go to their website at fmafest.org. Well, 
That's all for this episode's Campus Events. I'm Austin Williams. Thanks a lot, Austin. Well, that's all for today's show. We will be back in a few weeks for more updates on the UPI community. I'm Seth Witt. And I'm Blake Maupin. This has been the April 2022 edition of Bear TV News. Stay classy, Bears.